concept abuse. What exactly is it that we mean? Well, I'm defining this as simply holding on to a network or a flexible license for longer than is necessary to perform a task. Therefore, denying other users that license when it should really have been returned back to the license pool. Now we have to think, why does this happen? So let, let's just look at some of the reasons then as to, to why this may actually occur um, and why it's a problem as well. So, so how do users actually keep hold of these licenses? Um, so on this slide, really, we're talking about this happening on purpose. Well, if we look, if we look at this, you know, certainly in my time uh, as, a, as a CAD and PLM manager, I've seen on several occasions people get into work, people get into work early. Um, they launch all their applications. So we were using Siemens tools. So they would launch their NX, uh, Team Center, uh, maybe Mentor Graphics, and they would open up some work parts and they would start editing them just to make sure that they pulled the appropriate license. And at that stage, they would uh, head off, get a coffee, or go and stand around the water cooler, catch up with friends, maybe go to the morning meeting. But the, the point of this is that they would get there early in the morning and pull that license and reserve it for themselves. Um, and this, this is a problem because typically for companies, they won't be using, uh, they won't have enough licenses for all of their staff. And most of the companies we see, uh, if you have 100 engineers, you probably license for about 60, 65 uh, engineers. Because you can tip, you can you can be sure that some of them are on holiday, uh, some of them are out on business trips, um, some and a, a percentage of them just won't be using the tools at that point in time. Um, obviously, if you have all of your engineers, all hundred engineers coming in in the morning, and reserving their licenses, then you're going to find that not everybody can actually get get a license because you've only got about sixty five licenses. So this is where we talk about license ratios and license optimization. Uh, have you ever experienced that? I know I have. Uh, and talking to many others, they know that's exactly what happens. So we need to see if we can uh, train that behavior, and we'll talk about how we do that later. Now, we have come across on a couple of occasions um, some people who are really crafty, and it's about running scripts uh, to keep their sessions alive. Uh, so some, some software applications um, will actually pull a license back automatically. Um, we'll talk about that again later. Uh, but they actually have got a script that kind of pings or keeps their license application alive uh, so their license never get returned. Now, that is very devious, I would say. Um, doesn't happen very often. But using our tool, our solution, you'll find you should be able to see exactly which people are doing. And that kind of helps you track down what's happening. But it... Rather than doing things on purpose um, and hoarding licenses, this can happen by mistake as well. So how do users keep their licenses by mistake? Well, certainly during COVID, this has become more of an issue, more prevalent, um, and it happened certainly beforehand as well. So you may find that on your desk, uh, you have a high powered CAD workstation, um, but actually you're running from a different location. So you're actually maybe away on business, um, or from a COVID point of view, you're working from home. Rather than pulling huge amounts of data across the network, you can actually uh, remote desktop or you know similar into your CAD workstation on your desktop back in the office. And that allows you to run uh, some pretty complex uh, solves using the GPUs or the CPUs kind of on those, those machines. Um, without having to have that, that throughput at home. Now, what we often find um, when we, we first work with a customer is that companies that have that capability, users will simply be remote into the desktop, they'll run their, to do their CAD work or they'll run some simulations, and that when they're finished, they simply disconnect. Now, disconnecting is not the same as closing down the parts, closing down the application on the remote workstation. Um, so we often see then that people keep these licenses on their remote workstations um, for 
24 hours, 48 hours, you know, they're simply running these licenses all the time, um, which is not very good for license optimization. Uh, and it's also becoming more prevalent also with um, cloud hosting, uh, remote VPU workstations uh, that sit across the cloud um, via Microsoft Azure or um, Amazon AWS. More and more people are logging into remote workstations to run um, com kind of compute um, and, and high V GPU uh, type processes. So this can happen by mistake, and we'll look at we'll look at this as well. Uh, another one also is simply running running licenses on multiple workstations. Um, and how can this happen? Well, quite often I've seen it happen so many so many times is you have your engineers uh, sat out in the offices, but they come in to do a design review in the conference room, log in, let's log into SolidWorks, they show off uh, their design, take some feedback. Uh, one, of, one of the managers there says, right, come on, we need to make those changes right away, we've got a deadline. So the engineer goes scurrying out to uh, to make the changes, but he forgets to log out here, and he's he's ultimately using uh, consuming a license on the conference room computer and the computer back at his desktop, um, which is not a good situation to have. We also see commonly in in labs as well, so electrical labs, uh, all manner of different things. Um, you might have a PC or two where you're doing some testing. So again. Um, the engineer might log into this computer and uh, pull up SolidWorks or Cadence or, or some kind of electrical software, the same software he has running on his desktop back in his office. Um, and of course, he's consuming two sets of licenses when what he should have done is close down the tool on his office. Um, so he's then only consuming one license per person. So why does this matter? Well, users hoarding licenses, either actively or by mistake, the bottom line, is, bottom line is it's costing your company money. You're burning money on licenses, which um, which you shouldn't need to. If they're not fully utilized, then you're spending more money than uh, you should be. I mean, less licenses in the license pool is obviously forcing the company to make investment into unnecessary additional licenses. Uh, no one wants that. Um, I've certainly been in situations where um, chief engineers or management staff have come along, you know, bang their fists on the table. Right, we need more licenses. We can't have people having these license denials. Um, and it's only when you can prove and show them the information as to why um, the majority of the time uh, people aren't using the full licenses um, and that maybe we could change our working practices a little more. Um, when you can show that evidence about what, what can be saved, um, then the management actually pat you on the back and think, well, no, this is good because we don't need to spend that money. All the savings can be made. So it directly affects department budgets and ultimately the profitability of your business as well. So it is critical as to what we do. Well, how can LAMUM, LAMUM, how can it actually assist us with this checkout abuse? So, I mean, it seems, sounds simple, doesn't it? But we really do need to know what we own and who's using it and where it's being used. Um, now, so many companies we, we, we come across, you know, they think they've got a good handle on what's being used, where and when and by who. But actually, in, until you can see the data, um, it, it, it always surprises people. Um, every, every time we, we run a trial, um, People can see their own data. You know, one of the first question is, oh, "What? Why is why is Harry using that? You know, he shouldn't be using that license." Or, "Well, hold on, we, we've got a couple of guys from India using these licenses, and mm, that shouldn't be right. You know, we, we're not compliant with our license if they're using them. How, how's that happened?" So, <laughs> that fundamentally, by seeing what's being used by who and where, um, helps you immediately start checking out these. Um, uh, the license abuse. Um, we can start looking at current checkout duration so we can have a complete live picture as to who's using what and how long they've had it open. Um, I'm going to talk about options files in a moment because that's one of the key aspects. Uh, historical reports, well we have a whole host of them and it's certainly some of these reports 
um, are reports that you can't often get when you're using your own in-house um, kind of LM um, stat tools. So you might be you might be running some in-house tools and reports, but unless you're recording all this data, you just probably don't have this historical view and the way that we can present it. So we'll run through some of these in a demonstration. We also have a, a remove capability uh, that allows us to recycle and revoke licenses. Um, we have the capability to provide a live view for all users um, of uh, the users that are using the tools. Um, so it might be some hotly contested license modules. Well, if you allow users to look at that list, they can start self-administering and they might not have to get in touch with, um, with the administration staff. And we've got a whole host of different alerts, but here I've picked, it, picked out the long checkout alert, license availability, and the duplicate license checkout. 